Hello and welcome to the Big Apple School podcast. My name is Rico, and today we're going to speak about a few things, one of them being my hometown, Las Vegas. What do most people know about Las Vegas? Well, they know that there are casinos there. They know that there's gambling there, and that's about it. Um, so I'm going to tell you the truth, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more. You may think that you know some things about Las Vegas, but you have no idea. Anyway, so um, I'm going to tell you the truth about Las Vegas. Uh, I lived there for quite some time since I was five years old and uh, until about two years ago when I moved to Novosibirsk. So do the math and you'll figure it out. Well, there are many, many casinos there. Um, if you guys seen any movies with um, any kind of casinos, uh, like the movie Casino or um, what is it called? Hangover. Uh, the Hangover Part 1. Or the uh, Oceans movies, right? Uh, I remember actually interesting fact for you guys. When the first Oceans movie was being shot, my mother worked inside the Bellagio, and she was telling me about uh, this new movie. She was like, yeah, mijo, there's going to be this new movie coming out. Uh, it's going to have George Clooney and Brad Pitt, and, and it's going to be really cool. They're recording it right now. And I didn't know anything about it, of course, because they were still recording it, so there weren't any trailers or anything. She said, yeah, it's going to be called Oceans Friends or Oceans 11, something like that. Um, and uh, she told me about it. She said it's about these guys, and it sounded really interesting. So about a year later, it was released, Ocean's Eleven. I was like, oh, cool. That's the movie my mom was telling me about. So every time there was a new Ocean's movie, my mom knew about it because they filmed a lot of it inside the casino, and she saw it. So that's a pretty cool, interesting fact. Um, if you've seen any movies with casinos, you've probably seen Las Vegas, um, at least the central part of Las Vegas. The central part of Las Vegas is called The Strip. It is a very famous street. All the luxury casinos are on the Strip. There are casinos all over the city, but all of the big, big top dollar casinos, they're on the Strip. And uh, this is a very, very long street, actually. It's the center street of Las Vegas. It's very long. It takes you all the way almost out to the outskirts of Las Vegas. And uh, that's where all the main casinos are. There's another street, an old street, called Fremont Street, and that was the first street that had casinos. I actually used to work there, and it's a pretty interesting place. Home of the world's largest television screen. It's true, it's true. And uh, what else can I tell you about the casinos? Well, people ask me, what do you usually do in Las Vegas? And um, everything, I won't say everything, I'm, I'm lying if I say everything, but almost everything that you do in Las Vegas is inside of a casino. Think of any normal situation. It's the weekend, you want to take your wife, fiance, girlfriend to a nice restaurant. Where do you go? You have to go to a casino because all of the nice restaurants are in the luxury casinos. Maybe you want to go drinking with your friends. Um, you know, maybe you had a hard week at work and you say, hey, I'm going to go with Andre and get a beer. And if I want to go get a beer, I can go to a bar, which is kind of small, or I can go drink on the strip with all of the tourists where everyone's going crazy. Usually what people do is they try to stay away from the strip, whether it be for transportation purposes, whether it be for recreational purposes. People don't like to go to the strip if they live in Las Vegas. They stay away. It's almost like it's poison. Like, like, uh, like the strip is a cross and they are vampires. They're like, <sighs> they don't want to go there. They stay away. Um, at least the group of people that I know, most of my family and friends, they don't go to the Strip unless they really want to do some crazy thing like um, maybe party for New Year's Eve or something like that. But um, if I want to get a beer or something like that, I have to go to some small bar where it's not so populated and uh, it's not so busy, I guess. And that's usually what I do with, maybe with my brother or something. But um, if you don't want to go to a bar or something like that, you can go to maybe play pool. We have a couple of pool places. Um, but like I said, many things are in the casino. Some of you may like to bowl. I know that I like to bowl. And if I want to bowl, I have to go inside of a casino. All of the bowling alleys are inside of a casino. There's maybe one that's not inside a casino. So, recreational things to do. Um, another thing, for example, watching a movie, right? Everyone loves to watch a movie. Everyone likes to go to the movie theater and watch the new, I don't know, Batman or the new um, Marvel comic book hero movie. Well, whatever. If you want to go to a movie, it's usually inside a casino. Most movie theaters are inside casinos. I only know one or two, actually, in all of Las Vegas that are not inside of a casino. One's kind of far away from where I live, and the other one is closer, but it's smaller and it's kind of older, so people don't like to go there too much. So all of the new cool stuff is inside of a casino. And uh, what I can tell you about, uh, some people 
think that Las Vegas is a really cool city. There are many attractions, but there are only many attractions in the center. Las Vegas is a desert, guys. It's very, very hot, and if you get away from the center, there's nothing but dirt. For example, if you want to decorate your house, if you want your house to look nice, if you're somewhere in California or if you're somewhere where it's nice and, and warm but it's not really, really hot, you have some moisture in the air, it's kind of humid, then you can have some grass, you can have some trees. But in Las Vegas, people usually have rocks in front of their house. Like um, They stylize their house with rocks, so they'll have some kind of design with white rocks and red rocks and, and like do some kind of... Thing like that. Um, my neighbor, for example, he used to have a lot of cacti in front of his house, um, many different kinds and a lot of rocks, and it looked like an old Western movie or something. So um, don't get me wrong, there are some very nice houses and they are very modern, but a lot of people don't have grass because grass is expensive and it's hard to maintain because it's so dry. In the summer, it can get up to 50 degrees Celsius and it's just uh, hell almost literally hell. It's very, very hot. You feel like you're going to die. And every summer, I'm not exaggerating, every summer at least one person dies from the heat. Maybe it's an old lady, maybe it's a young child or something, but once a summer is a good estimate. About once a summer, somebody dies from the heat. And it's, it's sad, actually, but it's crazy. Another thing that I can tell you about Las Vegas is it's gonna sound bad, but Las Vegas is actually a pretty dangerous city. Um, there's one street corner in Las Vegas that was voted the most dangerous street corner in all of the United States, in the continental United States. And um, if I remember correctly, it was Martin Luther King and Vegas Drive, something like this. And um, it was like two years ago, they said it was the most dangerous street if you consider the percentage of crimes to the amount of people that live in this area, that's the most dangerous area in all of the United States. I don't know um, if it's still true. I don't know if it holds true now, but it was a very dangerous area, and there are many dangerous places in Las Vegas. My father uh, used to work in a casino, and uh, I think m like twice he got robbed walking out of the casino by some gangsters that wanted his money because... A lot of people think that people that are coming out of the casinos are tourists and they have a lot of money, so they try to rob them. It's not like everyone's in danger if you come out of a casino, don't get me wrong, but it is pretty dangerous. There is a chance that you can get robbed if you're in the wrong part or if you're in the wrong casino, for example. So I can tell you from experience that um, there are quite a few gang members in Las Vegas and a lot of them are equipped with weapons. So. I'm not going to say it's the most dangerous city in all of the United States or anything like that, but it is a pretty dangerous city if you're not careful. If you stay in the center and you stay where all the main casinos are and you play it safe, you'll be all right. But um, when I used to work on Fremont Street, for example, I would tell all the tourists to be careful because if they go to the wrong area, they can get robbed or something bad may happen. They can get into a fight with somebody or something like that. Another thing I want to tell you about and I guess it'll be the last thing I tell you about Las Vegas, is our public transportation sucks. I hate it. It sucks. If you want to catch a bus somewhere and you're not in the center where all of the tourists are, it'll take you up to 30 minutes or so to wait for a bus. So imagine you have to be somewhere by 9.30, and it takes you maybe 15 minutes by bus to get there. So you're there 30 minutes beforehand so that you can be at work early or wherever you need to go you want to be there early it takes you 15 minutes to get there so you're there waiting for the bus and you go early but if you miss the bus for example if you're going and you miss the bus it can take 30 to 40 minutes for the next bus to come which means you're late just because you missed one bus it's horrible if you miss a bus you're 30 minutes to an hour late maybe to work or meeting your friends and i hate the public transportation well, you might think, Rico, why don't you just not take the bus? Why don't you take something else? Well, unfortunately, we don't have anything else. We don't have a subway. We don't have trams. We don't have trolleys. We definitely don't have marshutkas. <laughs> and uh, taxis are pretty expensive. I remember when I first came to Russia, I took a taxi for about 200 rubles, and that's like, what, $7? If I try to take a taxi in Las Vegas, it's like $27? And let's pray to God that it's not from the airport, because then it's like $50 or something ridiculous like that. So taxis are kind of out of the question for people that live there, for residents. They don't take the taxi, so it's almost necessary to have a car. I had my first car when I was about 16. It was a gift. 
and I was uh, preparing to take my driver's license test. So I got my license at 17 years old, which takes me to another topic about driving age. Uh, that's what's different. Um, I guess it's a little different in every state for some of the restrictions about like if you have to take driver's ed. And if you take driver's ed, then you can get your driver's license, I guess, like three months earlier than normal, something like that. There's some weird law. But I got my license. I got my driver's license at 17 years old, my 17th birthday. So I got my driver's license at 17 years old only because I failed the first test. It's a long story. I don't want to tell you about it. But basically, there was a sign that was covered up by a tree, and I didn't see it, so I braked kind of hard. And... I instantly failed because the tires screeched. Uh, interesting fact, if you screech the tires on your driver's license test, instant fail. Uh, I could have got my driver's license before the age of 17, which means that I would have been driving around in my own car at 16 years old. It might be strange for you guys to hear because you guys get your driver's license at, what, 18 years old? So the minimum age that you can get your driver's license is 18 years old, and usually people don't start driving until after that. So. Another difference is the drinking age. I guess the drinking age in Russia is 18 years old, but in the United States it's 21 years old. So you can buy cigarettes at 18, you're considered an adult, you can go to jail for life at 18 years old, but you can't have a beer. So that's one thing that kind of sucks. Um, one more thing that I'll mention again, uh, I'll go back to the transportation topic for just one second. One more thing that I'll mention is that we don't have conductors like you guys do. You guys have conductors, like one little person uh, one little person that can go to any part of the bus magically and collect your money. It's amazing. I, I think the conductors are like acrobats because they can get to any part of the bus or trolley or whatever, even no matter how packed it is to get your money. So they'll just squish through people, push people around. They're usually pretty small and they get to you and they're like, hey, give me money. And you're like, okay, give me money to get to ticket. But yeah, so we don't have conductors. What we have is this little machine where you put money in and uh, it opens the tourniquet and then you just go. So you put money and go. Some of the buses don't even have tourniquets. So the only method of seeing if you can go is the bus driver. The bus driver watches you as you put money in and he sees a little green light and it means you can go and then you get on the bus. So no conductor. And as far as I know, um, and as far as I can say, the places that I've been, I've never seen buses packed like the buses are in Russia. At least um, in Novosibirsk, in Gordonaltaisk, and in Moscow, um, the buses are pretty packed. And in the places I've been, I've never seen them packed like they get packed in Russia. So that's another difference. Um, I want to talk about restaurants for a second. Uh, some guys like to ask me about food in the United States. So I can talk about restaurants for a bit and then I'll finish up. So uh, I'll talk about restaurants. One of the things about restaurants is that we, I guess, go to restaurants and cafes less than you guys do. It's very common for Russians to say, hey, let's go get some coffee, let's go get some tea. Well, in my city, uh, we don't drink tea. It's too hot for tea, I guess. Nobody likes tea. So, nobody likes tea. Uh, the only tea that people like is iced tea. And it's not even that popular because um, we have soda and, and free water. Um, but that's what I wanted to mention. Free water. In the restaurant, water is free. Water is absolutely free if it's not in a bottle. So, whatever water they have, which, by the way, has to be purified and filtered and stuff, the water at restaurants, filtered water, drinking water, um, is free. So, uh, if you go to a restaurant and you don't want a soda, or if you're on a diet and you don't want juice, you don't want coffee or anything like that, you only want water, the water's free, and it's unlimited. So you can keep getting cups of water, cups of water, cups of water. And also, if you don't get water, uh, you get a soda maybe, it has free refills. So you keep getting soda, keep getting soda, keep getting soda. Uh, you pay once for the soda and you can drink as much as you want. So that's one thing that's pretty cool. A lot of people like that. Another thing is the portion sizes. We have very big portion sizes compared to Russia. When I came to Russia and I ordered something for like 300 rubles, which is like $10, I expected it to be really big, but it wasn't really big. It was pretty small compared to what we have in America. So I noticed that the portion sizes are smaller. It's not necessarily a bad thing 
but it's just one of the things that's different and I wasn't used to it at first. Now I think it's a good thing because I've actually lost weight since I've been in Russia and I haven't really been exercising or anything different. Uh, I've just been living here and I lost weight, so that's cool. Um, we usually split the checks. Um, what I mean by split the check is uh, in Russia, when you go to the restaurant and you go with your friends and maybe five or six people all order food, you all order, and then you get one check at the end. Someone busts out a calculator, and they start doing the math, and they say, oh, I owe 180 rubles, I owe 295 rubles, and I owe 300 rubles. Everybody adds it all up, and then they give all of the money to the waiter or the waitress. And then she takes it, and then she brings back the change, and that's it. In the United States, people usually get split checks. So the waiter or waitress is ready from the beginning to count your food, your desserts, and your drinks and everything separately. So at the end of the night, when you're done, you ask for your check. Uh, I get one check, you get another check, and then the third person that's with us also gets their own check. They don't have to do any math, and they can usually pay by card, which is another thing. We always pay by card. Very rarely does anyone have cash. Everywhere you go, you can pay by card. I know people that buy things that are less than one dollar with their card. Can you imagine? People buy things that are like 75 cents or 99 cents with their card. So rarely does anyone use cash because uh, one, it's safer to have all of the money on your card and people don't like change in the United States. So people hate to have, walk around with change. So when we're in a restaurant or any place for that matter, we usually pay with cards. And I guess that's it. Um, if you guys have any questions about what I talked about today, uh, about uh, I'll review. I talked about Las Vegas. I talked about public transportation in Las Vegas and the places that I've been. I talked about restaurants and I talked about some of the general differences like different driving ages, drinking ages, no conductors on the bus. And oh, one final thing that I want to mention, uh, the passing money on the bus. Passing money on the bus. Um, if you've ever been on a marshrutka and you're sitting in the back and you don't want to get up all the way to go pay the marshrutka driver, you don't have any change, you have like a 500 ruble bill, and for uh, you non-Russians out there that are listening, 500 ruble bill, it's a little bit less than 20 bucks. So you have a 500 ruble bill, and then your marshrutka ride costs like 15 rubles. You can sit in the back and pass your 500 ruble bill to the front, and people will all take your bill, pass it to the front, the driver makes change for you, he gives it back, and all of the people give you back your money. For all of the Russians out there that are listening, of course you know this, but for those of you that aren't Russian and listening, that's what happens in Russia. You can take your 500 ruble bill, pass it to the front, and you'll get it back without any change missing, you'll get all of your money back. That may sound normal for some of you, but it would never happen in America that someone takes $20 and gives it to strangers so that they can give it to someone else and they get change and then they pass it back. Never ever would someone give money to someone else to receive change. They don't trust each other enough to do that. So that's one of the differences that I noticed right away when I was here, that people just hand over money and then don't even pay attention. They'll start texting on their phone, maybe reading a book, and then later someone's like, hey, excuse me, here's your money. You're like, okay, thanks, put it in your pocket, and then you keep reading, keep doing whatever you're doing like nothing happened. Shocked me the first time, but that's also another difference that we have. Nobody will ever pass money to a stranger to get change. They don't trust people enough. So that's, um, I guess, the final thing that I wanted to say. Sorry for jumping around the topics like that a bit, but they're all pretty much related, and that's why I kind of had a hard time keeping track. But if you have any questions, like I said, general stuff, um, Las Vegas, or about restaurants and stuff like that, you can ask about it in the comments, and I'll try to answer as soon as possible. And um, any ideas to add, maybe, or some ideas or suggestions for the next podcast would be welcome. So that was it for the Big Apple Podcast, and uh, thank you for listening. I will be here next time, of course, and um, that's a wrap. Bye-bye.